So you've decided that you want to sell your home, but you have no idea what that process looks like, or maybe you just need a quick refresher on all of the steps involved. Well, you're in luck because today I'm going to be sharing with you the seven steps that are involved in getting your home sold with a realtor. Hey y'all, thanks for checking out the video today. My name is Brock Bremer and I am your San Antonio Realtor. If this is your first time watching any of my videos, thank you so much for stopping by. Please go ahead and hit that subscribe button as well as that bell icon so that you'll be notified anytime that I share a new video in the future. Now let's dive on into the seven step process of getting your home sold. The very first step in the process is actually meeting with the Realtor. This is where you may be meeting them for the very first time and there's no commitment on your end to actually work with this agent, but this is a time for you to get to know each other, learn your goals as far as selling your house, learn how the agent is going to best help you with their strategy, their marketing plan, and everything else involved to get your home sold. In addition, uh, your realtor will help you identify the next steps in the process as far as your timeline and what your goals are. Now, the second step in the process is actually probably one of the more important steps in the entire process, and this one is establishing a price. Before your realtor even comes out to the home, they'll probably have a conversation with you in regards to any special features of the home, have you done any upgrades, um, is there a special view you may have, and a few other questions to kind of get a baseline for what to expect when they come to your home. They'll use some of this introductory information to create a market analysis for you and they'll share this market analysis when they come to the home. In the market analysis it will include comparable homes that have sold recently in the area. Hopefully there will be some within your specific neighborhood. If not there's going to be a certain radius from your home that they'll look at to see comparable homes. Now these homes will be very similar homes as far as similar square footage, similar size, obviously the location and they'll have sold recently, probably within the six months or sooner than that. So these will be very good data points uh, that will be shared with you to best help you understand what the market is doing in your local area and for the homes that are most similar to yours. Now with this market data and everything else that the realtor has prepared beforehand, uh, you'll want to establish the price at this point. This is a critical thing to get down because you don't want to price it too low. If you price it too low, you're gonna have lots of buyers and you're going to be leaving money on the table that you would have otherwise had to help you purchase your next home. Conversely, if you try to price it too high, you're gonna have lots of interested buyers looking at the home, but you'll receive very little offers, if any, meaning that you'll have to lower the price in order to entice buyers to want to make an offer on your home. So you really have to be careful here and kind of find that sweet spot. Your realtor, um, based on their research and market analysis, will help guide you if they think you're too low or too high at this point and kind of help you. At the end of the day, the price that you sell the home for is ultimately up to you as the seller and not the realtor. So you do have to establish the price. The realtor is just there to kind of guide you and make sure you're on track with the local market. Now, after this step has been done, we're gonna move into step three. After you've established the price, it's time to move on to the third step, which is actually preparing your home for sale. During this time, you're actually going to be doing a number of small things to get your home ready to go active on the market for sale. These minor items that you're gonna cover are any minor repairs, maybe you need to repaint or touch up some of the paint on your walls in the house. Also getting your house clean. It is imperative that your house looks clean so that when people come to look at your house, uh, they feel welcomed and can see a clean state. Having a messy house kind of turns off buyers, so you definitely wanna to try to do your best to keep your home as clean as possible throughout the entire selling process. Um, but on top of that, you may also want a home stager to come in and give you tips, tricks, and advice on how to best arrange your furniture and decorations, maybe add um, some other small items as well to just make your home more presentable to buyers as they come to look at your house. Once all these items are taken care of, a photographer will come out to your property and take pictures of the interior and exterior of the home from multiple angles so that it can present very well online when people are looking. A lot of people nowadays are scrolling through their phones or maybe on their laptop. So having great pictures of the home and making it looking presentable is very imperative at this time to get buyers to want to come out to your house and see it in person. Now, after all of this is done, your home has been prepared for the market and we are actually ready to move into step four, which is listing your home for sale. So you as the seller have nothing to do at this point. Your realtor will actually take all of the documents and all the photos and they'll upload it into the multiple listing service or the MLS 
And this is where other realtors will see that the home is for sale. In addition, most MLSs syndicate to third-party sites such as Realtor.com, Zillow, Redfin, and all those other home search sites that are out there. And this is where some buyers will actually see the home as well. So once it's listed for sale, this is the time that you can expect people to want to come see your house in person. So you'll have to allow people to come see the home in person. Uh, this will allow them to kind of get a feel for the space, make sure they like the neighborhood and the area that it's in, as well as just view the home in person. It's one thing to see photos or a video of a home, but it's a totally different experience getting to feel the home and be there in person and see it. So, so showings are gonna happen, and this is just a part of the step that is necessary to help get your home sold. In addition to showings, open houses are always an option as well. This is a time frame um, where people can come on their own or with their realtor and come see the home during a set time period for the day or the weekend um, to best see it and kind of get more people to the home at once versus having uh, one person here and then one person there and having to constantly leave your home. So open houses are a great way to draw more attention to the house and get even more people to come see it as well but are not required. But after it's been listed for sale and you've had people come see it, you're going to probably receive some offers at this point, which takes us to step number five, which is offers and negotiations. So after you've had several showings, you're going to be receiving offers from interested buyers that are in the market. All of the offers that are received by your real estate agent will be presented to you and your real estate agent is going to also go over all of the various terms and conditions that are in each of those offers. Now, a few of the terms and conditions that will be covered are going to be the purchase price, when the closing is going to happen, as well as how it's going to be financed. Now, there are a number of other terms and conditions and your real estate agent will go over those with you as well. Once you have seen all of the offers that you have, it is time to make a decision. Now, there are three things that can be done with any offer that you receive. You can accept it, you can reject an offer, or you can make a counter offer. If you accept an offer, you agree to all of the terms and conditions that have been presented to you, as well as the buyer has. If you decide to reject an offer, that one goes away completely. You've agreed to none of the terms and conditions. And the final outcome is, of course, the counter offer. A counter offer is where you like some of the terms and conditions, but you would like to change one or more of them. And so your agent will help present the counter offer back to the buyer where they can accept, reject, or even make another counter offer to you. During this negotiation phase, your real estate agent will be of great service to you to help guide you and help make those negotiations happen so that you and the buyer are happy and agree to all of the terms and conditions. Now, once you and the buyer have accepted and agreed to every term and condition in the contract, you are now officially under contract, which is the sixth step in the process. Now, this is sometimes also referred to as being under escrow. Now, during this time, the buyer is going to be working on their end with their lender to finalize details of the loan. They're also going to hire a third party inspector in most cases, and you're gonna to have to allow this inspector to come home and walk through the home and make their report for the buyer. Now, this is something that the buyer pays for, but you should expect an inspector to come through and look at the home. The inspector is going to come and look at the condition, test all the major systems, and make sure that they function properly, and they'll notate any defects or any items of concern that they find during their inspection. In addition, an appraiser will also come out to the home and make their assessment of the value of the home and provide that to the lender. While all of this is happening, this is your time to start packing up your house and preparing for your move. Once everything is finalized by the lender for their buyer, the title company has completed all of their search and title work, it is time to move on to closing. Closing day is the seventh and final step in the process. This is where you will go to the title company and you will sign all the documents that they have before you to transfer the ownership of the property from you over to the buyers and you are no longer the owner of this property. Once all of these documents have been signed by you as the seller and the buyer, they will be verified by the title company and everything will be transferred from you as the seller to the buyers and they will now be the owner of the new property and congratulations you've sold the home so that was a quick rundown of the seven step process of getting your home sold with a real estate professional i hope you gained some sort of value from the video and if you did please go ahead and give me one of these likes so that i know that you got some value out of it also if you haven't already please go ahead and subscribe to my channel and hit that bell icon so that you'll be notified anytime that i share a video in the future if you're ready to make a move to San Antonio or within San Antonio, please reach out. My contact information is below. I'm ready to be of service to you and help guide you through that process of either buying a home or selling a home here in San Antonio and the surrounding areas. So please reach out whenever you're ready. Thank you so much again for tuning in today and I hope you have a wonderful day. I look forward to talking to you soon.